When it comes to the hard rock scene, Miles Kennedy is without a doubt one of the busiest musicians out there, whether he's touring with Alter Bridge, Slash and the Conspirators, or going solo. It's safe to say Miles wears a lot of hats, but one role he finds himself in across all three groups is that of a lyricist. In the past, I've shared some picks for my favorite Alter Bridge lyrics, all of which just so happen to be written by Miles. So in today's video, I thought we could mix it up a little bit. So here are my top five favorite Miles Kennedy lyrics from bands other than Alter bridge. Let's start with one that should come as no surprise to anyone, the title track of Miles' 2021 album, The Ides of March. Prior to this record, Miles had already written several epic tales in the form of Blackbird, Fortress, The Last Hero, and more, but we'd never seen anything like that in his solo work. Then out comes The Ides of March, and we're suddenly treated to one of my favorite songs of all time. Back when this record first dropped, I didn't listen to it much, but I had some appreciation for the title track, and I thought it was pretty impressive. Then when I reviewed the entire Alter Bridge universe last year, link right here, and started listening to the album again, it finally clicked, and I started listening to this track obsessively. Whenever anyone talks about painting a picture with words, I think of the Ides of March, which is ironic considering one of his other songs from this album is literally about how a picture says a thousand words. The intro portion starts off so mysterious and prophetic, and that line, beware the Ides of March, is almost sinister given the historical context. Then as the track develops, things get bolder with the lines, in the streets of fire you hear the screaming, and too many's end may come too soon, like Miles is desperately trying to warn us of something. And finally, with the chorus and bridge, he begs with every fiber of his being, please don't forsake me, don't break my heart, all I'm saying, beware the Ides of March. Essentially, don't shoot the messenger just because I have bad news. I just want us to remember who we are and to be better. The entire song is a harrowing call to action, a warning that takes you on a journey. And it's some of the best writing Miles has ever done. And I know we're mainly talking lyrics today, but I gotta say, I love the little ominous guitar intro and the riff that he plays leading into the solo. Both of them are just so tasty. Next up is a song I once criticized in my review of Slash and the Conspirators' third record, a song called The One You Loved Is Gone. I was confused as to why the end of the song used a near identical melody to a song called Battleground in the band's previous album, especially since the songs are both long power ballads about a fractured relationship. However, there was a commenter on that review who made me approach it with a vastly different mindset. Going by the name of Mr. All Around 9275, they said, I questioned the decision of recycling that melody from Battleground in The One You Loved Is Gone until I saw it played live. The familiar melody played within the new context hits pretty hard, almost like it's an echoing of the past. It's like the two songs are two parts of a story, the first being about a relationship in turmoil and the other about looking back with regret. Honestly, I couldn't have said it better myself. I love Battleground and it's got a super unique song structure I'd love to talk about more in a different video. So when The One You Loved Is Gone had the same melody, I wrote it off as being lazy. But now that I'm interpreting it as part of a greater story, that puts the lyrics into a whole new context for me. The song actually reminds me a lot of Green Day's What's Her Name. Like you're looking back on a failed relationship and wondering what would have happened if a different timeline of events had occurred. It also works in the context of mourning someone if you you change the interpretation of just a couple of the lines. Overall, this was a song I slept on for a long time and wrote off as being recycled and tired. But we all know Miles has more than a few tricks up his sleeves, and this is just one such example of how incredible of a storyteller he truly is. Speaking of storytelling, let's move on to my third choice, which goes back in time to before any of Miles' current projects even existed. Eden, from the Mayfield 4's second and last record, Second Skin, tells the story of yet another fractured relationship, though this time from the perspective of two people who love each other, but things just aren't working anymore, and it would be more painful to keep trying to force it to work than to just break up. This actually reminds me a lot of a relationship from one of my favorite TV shows, but for the sake of spoilers, I won't say which one. I can't say that I've been in the exact situation that Miles sings about here, but I have been dumped out of the blue before, and there's one line that really resonates with me because of that. I don't want to start all over and try and find another shoulder to lean on because yours made me feel safe. I'm an introvert, so when I was dumped, the thought of putting myself out in the world again and being vulnerable with someone to build a relationship was a scary and exhausting thought. So instead, I tried to hold on to what I already had, what I thought worked and was safe, 
even if it wasn't in reality and it was hurting me to hold on so tightly. After the breakup, I never really understood why I fought so hard for that relationship until I heard this song. And that line made it all make sense. It's perhaps not the most poetic or flowery thing Miles has ever written, but the bluntness and vulnerability of this song is heart-wrenching. And it's a telltale sign of Miles' rapidly developing lyrical skills. You know, it's always good to revisit an artist's beginnings. And with Eden, you're getting some great stuff. All right, the last couple of tracks have been all about relationships. So let's shift gears to something more introspective. My fourth pick is from Miles' debut solo album, a song most easily described as a road trip soundtrack that would be terrible for most road trip movies. That song is Haunted by Design, and if you've ever listened to it, you know exactly what I mean when I call it a road trip soundtrack. Musically, it's the perfect fit for any kind of montage about driving cross country, but lyrically, it's actually pretty dark. Miles talks about voices in his head giving him insomnia and amplifying his fears, and how he's desperate for sleep to overtake him to silence those voices. He describes how hard it can be to be alone with one's thoughts, and how every single worry or dread feels exponentially bigger when that's all you can think about. Now, I'm currently unemployed and therefore spending a lot of time alone at home, so I can fully relate to this. I have a lot on my mind nowadays, what with trying to find a new job, running this channel, maintaining my hobbies, and bigger picture stuff like the absolute cesspool that is American politics. I have plenty of days where my own fears and worries can be absolutely crippling. And to be honest, it sucks. I think everyone deals with this to some degree, but how you deal with it is really what's most important. Miles has gone the route of mindfulness and trying to be at peace with oneself, as evidenced by the line, those who worry suffer twice, this I must concede. And I'm inclined to agree with him. Silencing those voices is a never ending challenge, but if you can do it without the aid of anything harmful, your life will be so much better for it. All right, that is enough philosophy for one video, but before we wrap up, I've got one more song I wanna discuss, and that song is Beneath the Savage Sun from SMKC's second record, World on Fire. You know those songs that just hit the sweet spot and feel so satisfying no matter how many times you listen to them? This is one of those tracks for me. A large part of that does stem from the fantastic instrumentals, but this is a video about lyrics, so it can only make the list if the words are good too. There aren't a whole lot of songs out there where Miles has a tone of malice and flat out rage, but this is one of them and it's freaking badass. And though the song may seem like it could be about people, it's actually about elephant poaching, a subject very near and dear to both Slash and Miles. With that in mind, the image this song conjures is haunting, especially with the lines, how many dead and bleeding only for an ivory lie, and in the fields you hear us crying for the ones we lost and loved. As far as I can tell, the song is actually written from the perspective of the elephants, so imagining them on the African savanna just wailing over the bodies of their slain brethren, it, it makes me mad, but like in a good way, I guess. Now, of course, with Miles' writing style, the lyrics are vague enough to apply to other scenarios as well. So this can also work with equally depressing situations about people. And the fact that these lyrics can trigger such a visceral response in me, no matter how I interpret them, shows just how intelligently written they are. It's one of those tracks that gets me fired up every time I listen to it. Hell, every time I even read the lyrics. And for that, it deserves a lot of credit. So those are my picks for Miles Kennedy's best lyrics outside of Alter Bridge, but now I wanna hear your choices. This guy has written hundreds of songs about nearly every topic under the sun, so there should be plenty to choose from. If you want more in-depth analysis of Miles' best lyrics, check out this video that I mentioned earlier about my favorite Alter Bridge lyrics that just so happened to be written by Miles. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.